Uncle Jesse here. This is going to be a Q&A video all about the Elgu Mars 3 and the Mercury X cleaning units. I reached out to you guys over on YouTube as well as Facebook asking for your questions that you might have on these machines. So let's jump right in and start answering. So one of the big ones that I was receiving is, you know, is there a Z wobble on the machine? I covered that in my video saying I did not see it at all and showed a video of that. Based on some information from Vogue or Veg Oil Guy and some others, I reshot a print starting from the very beginning. And in fact, I am seeing some small Z wobble on that print. It looks like it goes away after the first handful of initial layers and everything that I've continued to print so far, I've not really seen any issues with it so far, which is a good thing. However, I've already been in contact with Elgu and they've already stated that they're doing a deep dive into figuring out what exactly is causing that. So hopefully that's sorted before all the pre-order units are shipped out. Speaking of, Mark wants to know when are the units gonna start shipping? And as far as I know, they're gonna be shipping at the end of August. Is there any splashing with the unit? Uh, no, I haven't seen any of that whatsoever on any of the prints that I've run so far. I even put paper towel down around the printer and took the cover off and didn't even see any splashing on that. I got lots, and I mean lots of people asking about comparing the print quality and the speed, the print times between the Mars 3 and the Mars 2 or the Mars 2 Pro. I will be doing that as a separate video altogether. It's something that I'm starting to work on this week that I'll have up later in the week here. So you can look forward to that and I'll be doing a rundown of, you know, which is printing faster or what kind of print results you're really gonna be able to get from the Mars 3 over the Mars 2 or the Mars 2 Pro. Let me down in the comments if there's a specific file that you'd like me to run off and test and print. How much resin does the vat hold? I filled the resin up to the max fill line there on the vat and we're gonna pour it out into this container for this oh so scientific experiment here. Try and get any remaining resin out of there. It's a little over 350 milliliters or 12 ounces of resin that the vat holds up until that max fill line. Alex asks if there's any, oh, doorbell. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm very excited about this. Hot Toys figure. Is there any discernible difference between the FEP1 versus the FEP2? Uh, no, not as far as I could tell. Maybe it holds up a little bit better than the original that they had previously available. Uh, I honestly can't tell the difference between the standard FEP sheets that come on things like the Elgu Mars or the Anycubic machines or the Piopoli machines compared to even the NFEP sheets that EPAC sells. Supposedly they hold up longer. Uh, as far as I can tell, I don't have any marks or anything like that from the prints on my current Elgu Mars 3 here. Uh, the one thing I will say is that the Uni's IB resin 3D printer has the worst FEP sheets that I've ever seen. <laughs> They're like crazy thin. They're hair thin. And I poked my hole straight through the FEP. Another big one that was asked multiple times is, is it worth the Mars 3 over the 2? I think some of that will be answered in the follow-up video when I do a print comparison. To me, I think think it is. It's a great machine if you're in the market for a new machine uh, that prints fast, that prints at high detail. This thing works great and I'm seeing some really nice results from it. So Alex is asking if the rods that come on this is greased and is it a bad grease job? Uh, not that I've seen or felt. It feels proper. I'm not hearing any bad sounds coming from it or seeing any drag or anything like that for the most part. I don't really have any issues with that on the Elgu machines, but I understand some people have had issues with that in the past, but so far really good on that. And the other question was, what about the USB sticks? Yeah, they're using the same USB sticks that Elgu normally provides with their machines, which are hit or miss for the most part. Sometimes they work for a while and then they die. Sometimes they last a really long time. For the most part, uh, I'll have a link to these down below. I bought a 10 pack of these SanDisk 8 gig uh, sticks. I think it was 10 or 20 bucks for them. So not bad, especially since I have a ton of machines. So as soon as one of the USBs dies, or I think it's about to die, I just swap it out with one of these here. By the way, for resin 3D printers, this is, isn't just an Elgu thing. It's all of them. They all use really cheap USB sticks. And for the most part, if you're running into prints, uh, not loading or printing, it might be that the USB stick needs to be replaced. Adrian's asking if I've tried other resins yet, uh, other than the Soraya Tech Glow in the Dark. No, I haven't. I've just been working with the Elgu resins that I have on hand. Honestly, I pretty much only print with Elgu and Soraya Tech resins. They just work so well for me, and that's typically what I buy in bulk, and I mean a lot of it in bulk. <laughs> If it's on sale, I'm buying it up. Harry's asking with the whole Cheetu box situation there, is it still possible to 
this uh, to generate a file in Lychee or Prusa Slicer and then bring that over. Yeah, you can do that. So you can generate your supports and export that as an STL over in Lychee and then export that, bring in Cheetobox Pro or 1.9, slice it for the printer here. By the way, Elgu put out a statement earlier today saying that they're already working with Cheetobox to try and get this resolved. Sam asked a great question if I think that future Elgu Saturn or Mars 3 orders are going to differ from what we've shown here and others have shown off. Well, I mean, outside of the Z wobble, I can't really say for sure. I don't know what Elgu might be changing. You know, eventually they might change up and switch some things. We've seen that on some of the other previous iterations of the printers where certain things have very minorly tweaked on those. The one big one for me is just some of the firmware changes, like some of the touchscreen display interfaces that I was calling out previously in the video that was just a little bit hard to see. Here's a good one that came up multiple times asking if the original Mercury Plus fits the Mars 3 build plate, so let's check it out. So this is the Mercury Plus, it's a two-in-one unit so you can wash and clean and cure your prints. This is the Mars 3 build plate and it is just slightly, I mean you can get it in there but it's a it's a really tight and you gotta go in at an angle to fit it in there but I guess it does technically fit in there, it's just not able to go straight up and down, which also means you wouldn't be able to use the arm attachment for it either. But it does, the arm attachment does fit the back of it. So a bunch of folks were also asking about the Mercury X, the cleaning bucket, if other build plates would fit in it. So uh, here is the original Mars and Mars 2 Pro or Mars 2 build plate. Obviously, that's going to fit in there without any sort of issue. The Anycubic Mono X build plate does, actually that fits right in and into the basket for the printer. It should be able to rest in there at a slight angle, but it will definitely fit in the bucket with the metal bin in there. This is the Epax E10 build plate. It is, it'll fit in the bucket, but it's too large to go into the basket here. So you'd have to remove this metal basket if you wanted to put the full build plate in there. But it does mean any prints that come off of here should in theory fit in there as well. This is the Uniz EB. And as you see here, there's a bunch of failed prints on there. That's the furthest I've gotten with getting anything to print on this machine. I might put out a video on this at some point here. Uh, but let's see if that fits in here. Uh, it will fit in the bucket, but not inside the metal basket. And then obviously the Elgu Saturn fits in there perfectly. It was designed for that. Kevin wants to know how I keep prints from sticking to the FEP sheet because he's having that issue. A lot of it comes down to the settings that you're using with your prints and making sure that your build plate's properly leveled. But I also use this. This is FEP lubricant, or excuse me, this is PTFE lubricant, all, all sorts of wrong letters. And actually here's a clip from me unboxing the Mars 3. I'm making this video for all of the FEP lubricant haters out there. That's right. So uh, this is the brand new Elgu Mars 3 and yeah, haven't printed anything on it yet. So you're going to drop a few little bits of that FEP lubricant on there and rub it liberally all over that FEP sheet. Hopefully everything's okay. Yeah, it's going to be fine. So is it snake oil? Maybe, I have no idea. But if it works for me, it might work for you. And uh, I use this on all of my resin 3D printers. Uh, Pascal wanted to know, is it an issue that the wash station doesn't actually have a UV cover over it? Is there a concern that some of the resin that's inside that container is going to cure? Uh, potentially, depending on your room and your setup, I do have a window over here. I typically have the blinds closed all the time. I have my printers sitting here completely wide open most of the time without the tops on them, with resin sitting them. I don't have any issues with resin curing, so I'm not concerned about this not having a UV top. Again, that might differ versus your situation and how you have your printer set up in your space. If you have a lot of direct sunlight in that room, then it might end up causing that issue for you. I Like Life asked, is the current state of Cheetu Box frustrating? Yes, because I'd like to use other slicers to work with this machine, because currently Cheetu Box is running extremely slow on my Mac for me to slice files. It's very, very painful and uh, it crashes on me at least once a day now. So I'm hoping they 
uh, hopefully we'll fix some of these bugs that are in the latest version. Nathan mentioned that he'd like to see a Chi2 Box Basic versus Chi2 Box Pro versus Lychee and some of the differences between the different slicers. 100% gonna be taking a look at doing a video specifically on that so you can get a better idea of what you can expect if you decide to use Chi2 Box Pro or if you decide to use the paid version of Lychee Slicer. Mike asked, is the Mars 3 and the cleaning setup, is it easy enough to use for a first time printer? I would say yes, the Mars 2 is easily my most recommended resin 3 printer that I mentioned to people that they should pick up. It's just easy to work with. The Mars 3 is in the exact same boat. It's just going to give you a better, larger build volume. Not drastically, but a good bit larger build volume to work with. And again, in theory, it should be providing you with better print results because of that 4K screen. The wash and cure station, you can either go with this or the Mercury Plus might be easier to get started with depending on how much 3D printing and resin cleaning you're going to be trying to do at one time. But yeah, all of them are really easy to get started with, which is why I typically recommend the Mars series of printers to people that are just getting started. Helios want to know how much more noisy is the X version of this wash and cure station versus some of the other cure stations out there. I would say it's pretty much on par other than that really loud beeping sound that you'll get when uh, you're pausing or that you've removed the, the lid here and it's trying to warn you that, hey, you can't do that sort of thing. That's pretty loud. Is Elgu selling replacement screens for the Mars 3 yet? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no, but I'm sure they will be. Would prints from the Sonic Mega 8K fit in this wash and cure station? Uh, potentially? That's a really big printer that I'm about to get started on here, starting later this evening here, or maybe tomorrow at this point. Uh, but you might be better off with the Anycubic large wash and cure station. That thing is even larger than this, and it is all in one unit, so that means you'll have to remove the wash unit before you can go cure your prints. But even with the large prints that are coming off that machine, it's probably too large for the curing station. But again, all depending on what you're printing. Here's a great one. Do the portable filters that Elgu offers fit inside the unit? Uh, yes, they do. So here's this. They fit in there without an issue whatsoever. How many hours can you print on the FEP2 before it needs to be replaced? I, I don't know. Again, I'm not quite sure what difference the quality exactly is between the standard FEP sheets that Elgu uses on their machines versus this one. It's, apparently, they're supposed to be a little bit more durable than the previous ones. I can typically go months before changing the FEP sheet. And in fact, I think on my Mars 2 Pro, it's been like nine plus months since I've changed it. Kirby, my friend, is asking if the wash and cure, it, basically any of the wash and cure stations, does it really make a difference over just hand cleaning your prints? I see much cleaner prints coming out of my wash and cure stations than if I just used a straight bucket and dunked it in there myself and tried to agitate the prints. That's part of my issue with some of these extremely large resin printers. There's no real easy way to thoroughly clean those without just hand wiping them down. Retro asking if we can disable that really loud, annoying beep from the wash and cure station. No, not as far as I'm aware. I'll dig back through the manual, but I'm pretty sure that's just, it's there. Vroom, yeah, baby. Um, I, I'm not gonna mess with it this week. Probably next week I'll be messing around with the Vroom settings on this machine and seeing how fast we can actually get it printing. I managed to get through almost all the questions, so thank you so much for submitting those. Let me down in the comments if you liked this kind of video. It's not something that I've done previously, and I might do it here moving forward with some of the other printers that I receive, starting with the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. Also, if you're interested in the Elgu Mars 3 or the Wash and Cure units or anything else that I've mentioned in the video, you'll find links down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.